the final stage of the still life drawing and of really any drawing is called binding and I don't know if anybody else uses that term but I think it's a good term because it's about dealing with edges and making sure that all of the objects on the still life are defined in the way that you want. So here I'm going to start with the ball and you'll notice that what I'm not doing is I'm not just drawing a line around the edge of the ball to define the ball. It's totally not necessary because most of the time I have some value distinction going on. Now, if I do feel like uh, I need some contour, I can use that um, when value distinctions are very subtle. Um, and But I do want to play with that. Sometimes I want to use contour, sometimes I want to use a soft edge and let the distinction between object and background disappear completely. The point is you want variety. And when you use, co and you want to use contour, you want to use the contour as a value very specifically. You don't want to use contour as a deep, thick line because a contour line can be dark, it can be thin, wide, soft, it can be a whole bunch of different things and you don't want to just default to one way of doing it. So here what I need to do is go through with the eraser, switching up pencils a lot, and clean up a lot of edges. If I have any contour lines that I don't want that are leaveovers from doing structure or any kind of rendering stages, I need to go back and just erase them completely and draw back sections in. This is the chance that I have to work on a lot of details that I haven't worked on before, even in the rendering stage. Um, so I noticed that this book edge is kind of a prominent edge, this front corner. So I need to bump that up, and I'm going to use a variety of tricks. I'm going to use some contour, some extra contrast, and um, use highlights and pretty much everything in the toolkit to emphasize this little um, area of the book because it is very distinctive. There's a highlight on the corner. There's uh, a lot of damage to the corner, so it's a little bit more rounded than you would normally see on a book. Um, there are some high contrast areas um, right there. And it just has a very characteristic shape. So I want to go through, um, erase everything, erase things to the side of it to be sure I have enough contrast. Um, and if I can, I'm going to include the little bit of, uh, of highlight on the damaged side of the book where it's a little bit lighter. So here I've noticed that there's a uh, old contour line on this. Uh, vertical book that I just need to get rid of completely. It just hadn't gotten erased through the whole process and now's the time to do it just to soften up that edge and to um, make sure that uh, it's being distinguished by value and not by contour alone. Um, and I can work on just any little area that I think needs a little bit of attention. So the back of the book here, um, the pages are kind of split. Um, and uh, so I'm going to emphasize those little areas. The cover of the book is pulling up a little bit. So I'm going to go through, make sure that that um, I put a shadow in there to kind of convey that the book's not this perfect um, object. And it's pretty fun to do that in the binding stages because this is where you can give your viewership and yourself a little bit more to look at when you get up close. Um, the initial stages of the drawing, you're thinking about how is this going to hit when someone first looks at it from across the room. And now, in the rendering and in the binding stages, you're thinking of how can I make this really interesting to look at from a viewing distance of like two to three feet. So I need to clean up anything that uh, has been hanging over. I noticed that this shadow doesn't really make sense with the book, so I'm also trying to reinforce structure. Um, the shadow just somehow drifted down a little bit too far, so I have to go back, push it back upward to where it's a little bit more believable. Um, one of the things that you can do is, if you get, if you work on this up close, you're always within a certain viewing distance, about a foot and a half to two feet. Um, and that creates a certain type of viewing. So one of the things you can do is back up at least six feet away, take a look at your drawing, and see what bugs you. Um, something's going to jump out at you, most likely. And when you're stuck and you don't know where to go, always take a step back. 
So um, if you need to clean your eraser, erase your uh, erase on your jeans a little bit, and that'll kind of clean out a spot so you can start getting back to the white of the page. So picking up some highlights again, um, redefining certain edges that got a little messy because the hand's passing over it repeatedly. You know, this is a very sharp box, and it's very perfectly constructed, so at least some of the edges should be kind of sharp. Um, maybe not every edge, but some should be. Um, one of the interesting little interactions is the little teeny bit of overlap of the tin, and that's going to need some attention later. I noticed that there's a little bit of sloppy value application on this shadow, so I went back and cleaned that up. Um, that was one of the things that was bugging me for quite some time that uh, I was just putting off dealing with. Um, so here, I want to be sure that the edge between these books is kind of defined enough and that there's enough contrast uh, to make this all work together. Um, and one of the things that you're looking for is uh, progressions in value and, um, and interactions in value. So you always want to be sure that you're, that you're going back to the previous stage and reinforcing what you've done. So here I'm still thinking about what I did all the way in the beginning stages of reinforcing structure and uh, making sure things are, are properly um, defined and laid out according to um, how they ought to go um, symmetry-wise and everything. I realized that there are still a bunch of structural lines left on the tin can, so I needed to erase those. And as I'm erasing those, I'm paying attention to that initial ellipse that I did, making sure that it's actually correct. Um, then I realized that I hadn't dealt with the edges much on these two books, and um, that meant that I kind of had to push a large section of value down just so I could get the edge correct. And that's one of those strange situations in drawing with a process and a method like this, is that um, when you get to a more advanced stage, you realize that the things you did in the previous stage inform and affect what you're doing now. So you may not realize it until you go one to three stages ahead that you needed to do something a little differently in the previous stage. So in terms of a long-term learning process, what you're going to have to do is repeat this process over and over again and use the information from the late stages to inform what you're doing, what you're doing in the beginning. And that's one of those things that uh, is beneficial about going through classes like this is that um, you're going to know uh, for sure that you can go back through and do this process, repeat it, and refine it as you go along. And the nice thing about going through the whole entire process every single time is that you do get information uh, from the end that's going to improve the way that you begin.